So we'll get this in the lathe. As always, I've put a 53 mil Forstner bit in the back to hold it, um, to give us our start. So it's been already been rounded off, trued off. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to go for my center line first and get our mortise into a bottom because as always I'm going to be using the mortise for this so we've got our center spot already well we hope it's our center spot we'll just double check it i wouldn't imagine that's too far off so then we're going to go 57 or 27 mil sorry 27 mil which will give us our 54 mil opening for our mortise in the bottom of our piece so I'm just going to open this up it's not going to go very deep only going to go about five mil deep on the mortise don't need to be majorly deep just clean. drop that a little bit so we'll just clean this out with a 3.8 bowl gouge So I'm just going to clean the bottom of that up with a scraper just so we've got a nice flat bottom and what that also does is put a slight taper on the mortars just to give us a little bit more security when we're holding in our chuck. So smooth that out nice. So because the front's not perfectly as you can see the per the front is not perfectly true i'm going to just skim across the front of this just take a small layer off of it just to throw it up really i don't suppose it really matters really because we're going to take a lot of this off anyway camera back so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my shape to curve in so I'm going to start taking from this corner and work my way around um, to give me my shape of my bowl Chestnuts, microcrystalline wax, and uh, this will give us a nice hard wear and finish, which should keep it shine and uh, shouldn't expose fingerprints all over the piece. That's the idea, anyway. So, what we're going to do is we're going to rub this in. And I'm going to leave this to soak for about 10-15 minutes before I come back and buff it off. So there we go. We have a nice shiny finish. Like I say, with the microcrystalline wax, um, there won't leave fingerprints. 
nothing like that, so there you go, nice edge, nice shine. Like I said, I want to leave it natural, so we managed to keep the natural look, so that is perfect. So, what we need to do now is decide what we're going to do with this front. Um, I may just go on overhead. I've got a bit of a lip here. I've got a bit of a lip here around about five, six mil. So I may just chamfer that a little bit just to give me a bit of a curved edge. And what I might do, I might just take this corner off here once we actually get a shape that we're happy with. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of chamfer that over and then just take it so it's gently tapered up on the front. So we've got a little bit, so we've got a little bit of an uphill graze to the middle. We're not going to touch the middle. We're just gently going to bring that in to give us our natural finish that we're looking for. So I'm going to use the half inch bowl gouge for this. Um, we're going to bring that, we'll grade that out to where we want it, I think. Um, like I say, perhaps get it down to about three mil on this edge. So nothing drastic, but we're gently just going to feather that out. So what I'm going to use for this, I'm going to be doing shear cuts on this. So I'm just gently going to take it from this edge first and gradually work my way back till we get the desired thickness that we want. for the autumn well they're called the natural colors um forest green pear green and earth they're not really the nicest colors um but i thought they might um sort of make this look a bit different to be honest i normally use the vibrant colors but i thought we'd try something a bit different so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to start with the lightest first the pear green and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub a piece of tissue because I don't want it. I don't want a constant blend. I want um, sort of patterns over it. So I'm going to scrub a piece of tissue just as a rough screw up. And then we're going to spray on, give it a good shake. And we're just going to... Sp All right, nozzle's blocked. Yep, nozzle's blocked. Right, now we've unblocked it, let's try again. So, screwed up our tissue, so it's all nice and scrunched up. Gonna spray away from our workpiece, just gonna, and I'm just gonna dab it on to give me some effects. Like so, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep moving the tissue, because if not, we're gonna get flat spots, um, and we don't want that. We're just going to gradually bring that in to give us some just different. You can do this with a sea sponge. Um, I've done it with a sea sponge on a different type of colouring, so that works quite well. So I'm just going to try and get as much. Forest, is it forest green? Yeah, no, pear green, sorry, as we can. Obviously, oak's a bit dark, so it's going to take some of the colour out of it. Well, not take some of the colour out of it, but... Um, so I think there's our pear green. Just clean that nozzle so it don't block up again. So we've got our pear green. Then what we're going to go for is the slightly darker colour, which will be the earth. And we're going to do exactly the same principle. 
with the earth is what we did with the pear green but I'm just going to dry this off a little bit just using the hot air going just to dry this off a little bit Hopefully this is going to give us an autumny, bit like a forest floor with all the leaves have fallen on the ground, um, sort of autumny look. That's the plan anyway. And hopefully with the grain of the oak, it should the the grain should glimmer through a little bit as well. So it shouldn't be. Uh, so we just dried that off a little bit. So we're going to do exactly the same principle now with the earth. Again, always spray away from your piece. Now just remember this is going to be a darker colour. So you don't want too much on there. But obviously you need enough to bring it through. It's about moderation and uh, you can always go back and put a little bit more on, but you can't take it off. So I think we're going to call that that. I'm not going to go over the top with that. So again, clean my nozzle. So we don't get it dry out. And now we've got the forest green. So we're just going to gently dry that off again with the hot air gun and then we're going to go with the forest green exactly the same dry so now like I say forest green exactly the same scrunch up our tissue give a good shake make sure we've got mixed properly and then just gently and again nothing too major because we don't want it too dark and we still want to see some of that original pear green showing through so think we're about there. Just need a little bit more in here. And I think that is as far as I'm going to go, to be perfectly honest. So clean the nozzle, put that out of the way. Just get a bit of tissue and wipe the bed of the lathe where we've spilled a bit of colour. So we're just going to dry that off with a hot air gun and then we can get some sand and sealer over it. Don't know what to do about this edge. I may actually just leave that edge and naturally wax that edge because it actually looks like it's blending over the corner. So that looks quite nice. I think if I do it black it's just going to make it look wrong. So uh, So what we've got to do now is we've got to get some sand and sealer on it to um, obviously seal that. Um, because I don't want to, if I just put rub on the sand and say it's going to blend some of the colours in and some of the colours are going to match. And they're going to, but I really want it looking like that. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the chestnut uh, cellulose sand and sealer to spray onto it to give it a nice coat. And now just seal those colours in and hold them fast um, as they are because they look a bit like leaves and that's what I was looking for so hopefully um, this will hold them in. So I'm just going to turn the lathe on slow. I'm just going to do a couple of coats 
with the sand and the seal. I'm just going to do this edge as well. And don't take many minutes to dry. Give it a couple of coats, and then uh, we can decide what we're going to do with the rest of it. This should make the colours pop a little bit. The sand and sealer should bring the colours out a little bit. So, uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so now we've got a colour on it. Um, I've got it sand and sealed. So the next stage is just to dish out um, and leave as much as we're going to leave on it. I want the rim quite thick. Um, I know it means that the dish is not going to be very big on the inside, but it's going to be more of a decorative piece than a um, usable piece. That's the plan anyway. So I'm perhaps going to take it back to about there somewhere. Um, but as we turn it, we'll know more as we get to a stage where um, we know where we want it. So I'm just going to gradually take this back until we uh, get a rough idea where we want to go to. You normally can tell by when you turn it, you get to a stage where um, you can see the, the port proportion of it. And then something usually clicks and says, yep, that's about right. Well, it does for me anyway. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> So what you'll do is just sand that now. Now I could do the inside with Yorkshire grit. I've got a little bit of chipping out there. You just need to touch up. That's the trouble. That's the disadvantage of a scraper. I can just get a little bit of brown and just touch that in with a little bit of brown. Um, but that's the disadvantages with a scraper. It's not actually a cutter. It's a scraping action, unfortunately. But um, we'll sand this up making sure that we try not to catch the edges. So I'm going to sand it from 120 to uh, 240. So I was only going to take it up to um, 240 in Yorkshire Grit it, but I decided to sand it up to 400 and then we'll finish it um, by hand but obviously we've just got a little mark there I need to get rid of a couple of little marks there too and um, now I've got two choices on those I either put a little bit of a band around it so it's sort of coming over and the band is there or I try and blend it in if I try and blend it in it's going to bleed into the wood down here so I think my best bet is just to try and get little bit of a band around there now the best way to do that I believe is with a point of detailing tool and just gently try and bring that out so we'll see what happens just try and curve it around the corner Right, so that's got rid of the chip in. Uh, just still a little tiny bit there. So you need to go just that little bit wider. Nothing. And just put that little step in it. Hopefully just to cover that little bit of chipping up. Which it's done. 
So what we do now is we just get a bit of sandpaper, just gently buff it out really carefully. So I'm just using a bit of 240 just to feather that around on that corner, take any tool marks out of it. And we'll just use a bit of 240, um, 400, sorry, to um, finish that off. soaker for about 20 minutes let's get it buffed off I'm using the piece of cloth that I actually put the wax on with to start with so that we can uh, work in and we should generate just a little bit of heat with the friction just to work the wax in a bit better like I say no major pressure exactly the same principle as the bottom don't need no major pressure Let's the actual polish do the job. We went around the back here. Just do that as well. Just going to speed up a little bit. now is get a clean piece just gently gonna buff it up as you can see the shine starting to come like I said I don't want a major shine just a little bit of a sheen I think that will do us it's nice and smooth anyway nice and smooth so as you can see we've got a nice shine in there but I don't want too much of a shine on here I just want like a sheen on there so let's get it out and have a look so there you go it's a bit close for us move it back a little bit so there you go we've got the slight sheen on the outer edge and we've got a nice shine in the middle got a nice shine on the back Nice smooth finish. Notch on the back, which is what I wanted. Got a lip there. What's that? Three, maybe four mil thick, as you can see. So, yeah, looks good. I like that. Um, I've got that nice um, sort of autumn look around the bowl, which is what I was looking for. Again, you can do that with like a sea sponge, but we use the screwed up tissue paper effect to get it make it look a little bit better so anyway yeah I really like that it's turned out really well so what I'll do is I'll get some photographs of this up on the end as always and then you guys can have a better look at it so anyway hopefully we'll be doing another one of these tonight on tonight's live um, and this video hopefully will be out sometime the following week if not that'll be out in the near future so uh, if you don't catch the live you might catch the video. So anyway, guys, take care. Speak to you soon and bye for now.